You know what, I never thought that we were gonna get any DLC from God of War Ragnarok, but here we are. I was thinking that, you know, since the game director himself, Eric Williams, was like, oh, don't expect any DLC because I'm pretty much done with the Norse Saga. I was like, that's it, we're just gonna move on to the next Pantheon, I guess. But boy, was I wrong. There are rumors of a DLC just circulating earlier this year and I got a little excited but I didn't want to keep my hopes up just in case because in the back of my mind this is all just hearsay and I won't be convinced until I actually see a trailer. Well little did I know while I was watching the game awards I was watching Kratos himself you know rose to Call of Duty games and then Santa Monica drops this brand new trailer for the God of War DLC called Valhalla. This is exciting news for me especially since we could potentially get some more lore from God of War and possibly get a hint towards like the next God of War sequel. Like, Believe me, I was ready to throw my money at Santa Monica, but I didn't even get to the best part about this DLC. December 12, it's coming out in a week? Free? Free? I thought I had to spend money on this shit and it's free? That's right, the game is free and it was releasing less than a week from the Game Awards. They honestly didn't even have to make this DLC free because I know Santa Monica always makes good products so I'm always willing to dish out some cash just for them. But to make the DLC free for the player just shows us that they really care for the fans and this was more of a passion project for them. Well not only that, but they're making it playable within a week. That's like very rare in the gaming industry. I wish more gaming companies would just make the games playable within the week of the release trailer but since a lot more games are getting released in buggy states, I I doubt this would be happening anytime soon but anyways before we talk about the Valhalla DLC I gotta put out a spoiler warning first if you haven't played it yet go do so but I gotta be honest the fact that this game was described as a roguelike really made me second guess about downloading the DLC I haven't played much roguelike games but the only ones that I can remember playing was Returnal and I wasn't a fan but I know that since Santa Monica's behind this they're gonna put their own spin towards the genre so I'm down to just try it and see what happens if you're one of the few people that are like the hell is a roguelike game well it's supposed to be a game where you go into these randomly generated levels with the odds heavily stacked against you at the very beginning and obviously you're very severely underpowered and haven't gotten any good loot yet as you progress through these levels you get better loot and the boss fights also get harder as you progress up the ladder health packs in this game are a very scarce resource so in order to survive you really need to avoid getting hit as much as you possibly can in the very beginning the game literally wants to crush your spirits like as soon as possible and sometimes it'll put you up against a boss fight in just the most unfair circumstance like you'll go in there with just 10 hp remaining and just just get folded like a piece of paper because you went in there with nothing but the Kleenex armor set of weakness and just die. You're probably thinking, it's no big deal, you can just restart at the nearest checkpoint, right? Nope, there isn't a checkpoint. When you die, you have to restart all the way from the beginning without any of the loot that you've gathered from your battles. And you can't even recover them in this DLC. They are just straight up gone. There are some people who like this type of gameplay, but it's just not for me. Luckily, God of War does a few things that made this type of game at least tolerable for me. Like they didn't just make a roguelike DLC just because they felt like it. it actually serves a story purpose since Kratos isn't the type of guy to just visit Sigmund Freud and ask for a therapy session his therapy is fighting it's what gives him his mental clarity so in order for him to decide whether he'll be the new god of war or not he's gonna need to let go of the character he once was and accept the character who he has become all this genius storyline is interwoven alongside the roguelike gameplay and it makes me keep doing runs just to see what kind of new dialogue I might get they even have a way of explaining all the randomly generated levels too and sometimes when you go to these random levels there's always a surprise around every corner. If you're not used to roguelike games, it might feel unfair at first, but don't worry, you're able to adjust the difficulty level in the settings. I can't tell you how awesome this feature is because I've played games like Returnal where it didn't have one and it was just mentally exhausting to play those games. Because for me, I like to play video games to relax and unwind. So having an easier gameplay option is just a nice feature. I'm not trying to sweat, bro. I'm just trying to just passively go through the game. But there is a catch though. The only penalty you get from lowering the difficulty is how much loot you'll get. But some people might see this as a a bad trade-off but for me I think it's worth it. I originally set the difficulty to the highest level but then after getting clapped by like a couple of enemies I just took the L and just lowered the difficulty because I'm not trying to have this story spoiled for me especially from YouTube. Yep I'm pointing at you Jacksepticeye. I was afraid of thumbnails like these spoiling the story for me but luckily I finished the game before I got spoiled by any thumbnails on YouTube. But you may want to lower the difficulty anyways just because once you get to tier you're gonna end up ripping your hair out especially when you see how ferocious this guy fights. By the way if it isn't made clear in the story the reason 
reason why Kratos goes to Valhalla is because some mystery person sent him to find whoever wrote this letter. And then we find out in the story that this ends up being Tyr. He's really down for Kratos to take his old position as God of War of the Norse realm, but he thinks he's not ready yet. So in order to become worthy of the title, he has to fight Tyr for the position first. If you think this boss fight was gonna be easy, well, it really wasn't. This boss fight is one of the hardest things I've ever done in the game. The only way you'll even stand a chance against Tyr is if you had a perfect run with every level only sustaining minimal damage, and then you just gotta learn his attack patterns. I'll be honest, you're gonna die a couple times, but once you memorize the attack patterns, you know, you know how it goes. It gets pretty easy. Even though I do get frustrated every time I lose him, Santa Monica at least finds a way to make the journey back as enjoyable as the gameplay. At least in this DLC, what's cool about the DLC is you get new dialogue every time you get sent back to the shore. It gives me at least a purpose to just keep restarting even if I unintentionally die. Like at least I'll have the new dialogue to look forward to. Some of the conversations we get to hear as we go through the levels is how Sigrun and Mimir's relationship develops, how Kratos opens up about his past life in Greece, and we also get to see what Mimir used to do before he arrived in all the Norse pantheon. Something more subtle that isn't really discussed in depth is the weapons that Tyr uses. Whenever you fight him, he always brings out a different weapon from his many travels. Maybe this is alluding to where God of War may take place in the sequel? Who knows? But I'm gonna leave it to those God of War YouTubers that love to speculate on these kinds of things. So I'm excited what the community comes up with in terms of like potential theory and speculation. But also, don't forget, we got all these amazing content for the amazing price of free 99. It still baffles me that Santa Monica chose to give the DLC for free. It only solidifies them in my eyes as a company worthy of their amazing reputation and my money. Like they don't miss bro. Like they basically have a reservation for my money in my bank account. But if you guys have God of War Ragnarok, this DLC is worthy of your time. I promise you. It's really that good to just take it out of your dusty ass closet and just experience it again. If I had to give this DLC a number score, I give it a five for the gameplay alone. You know, the gameplay is always as fun as ever, but the story is also what makes this DLC pretty good in conjunction with the gameplay. So five plus five equals 10 on the Buko scale. I don't know if that's what I'm going to call it, but it's going to be a work in progress. Well, anyways, guys, that's all I got for today. Go play it. All right. Goodbye. Yeah.